In our Sunday school lesson this week, we take a look at David's sin and punishment. We'll see here in our lesson this week again, where the Lord, he will rebuke us when we sin. Nobody is perfect. David was not perfect. So he's a really good example for why the Lord, he rebukes us and why it is that we need to heed his rebuke. David, some will suggest that he's defined by two moments. He's either defined by his defeating Goliath or he's defined by his great sin. Do you think that your sin, do you think that your sin defines you? Again, it is very important that we heed the rebuke of the Lord because none of us are perfect. We all will falter. We will all commit sin. And so God in those moments, he will not be pleased as we'll see here in our Sunday school lesson. He will rebuke us. Do you heed God's rebuke? That is the question that again, in this Sunday school lesson this week, that is the question that you will need to answer. As we take a look here at our Sunday school lesson this week, our lesson, it opens up there in the second verse with David, we're told, we'll see he walks out onto his roof where he saw a woman across the way bathing. Scripture tells us that this woman, that she was a beauty to behold. We'll see there in the third verse that, that David, when he saw this woman bathing, that he inquired about who she was. You see, David, I would say to you, plain and clear, he had only one thing on his mind. We would say that David was infatuated with this woman, but I would say to you that, that David, he was moving out of lust as we see here, as we continue on in our lesson there in the fourth verse. The reason why I say that David was moving out of lust is because we'll see that David, he had messengers to bring her to his home. And again, David had her brought to his home for one specific purpose. And we'll see there in the fourth verse that David and the woman that they laid together. And afterward, we're told there in the fourth verse, we're told that she washed herself and that she went back home. Now, some of us, we would look at this and we wouldn't think that this was a big deal because what David did was, is pretty common today. We would say that, hey, he had a one night stand and, and many of us, we would brush it off as, again, like it's no big deal. But this was a very big deal, what David did, because what David did, it was wrong. And the fact of the matter is that David knew what he was doing. He knew that he was wrong and what it was that he was doing. David, I want you to understand today, he knew that he was transgressing against God. David knew that he was being disobedient. David knew that he was committing a sin against the Lord. How do I know this? Well, take a look there at the third verse, at what we see there in the third verse. We'll see there in the third verse that, that when David had inquired about who the woman was, who he was that he had saw bathing, we are told that he was told exactly who she was. He was given her name, Bathsheba. We'll see there in the third verse. And even more importantly here, we'll see that David was told that she was a wife. She was the wife of a man named Uriah. So David, he was already, I want you to understand there, in the third verse there, he had information. But again, in the opening verse, in the second verse, we'll see that David, he was lusting after Bathsheba, and that's already a sin itself. Now he has information as to who she is. The fact that she was married should have been a, a no-no for David. He should have stopped right then and there, left it at the lust, not move into action. But hey, and David had only one thing in mind, and then he moved. He had her brought to his home where scripture tells us they laid together. We would say that they slept together is what we would say. So he lusted after this woman and then he committed fornication. He fornicated, he committed adultery with this woman. We'll see here as we continue on in our Sunday school lesson there in the fourth verse, the fact that she washed herself to cleanse herself from impurity, it shows us, it speaks to the fact that again, David knew exactly what he was doing. David knew that he was transgressing against the Lord. David knew that he was committing a sin. It is likely that David had her to cleanse herself from impurity. David, I would say to all of you today that he's the example of, of what we will do. 
I have said this before, and I said this in a recent lesson, and I said this in a sermon as well. You and I, nine times out of 10, and I bump it up to 9.9, 9.9 times out of 10, we know when we are doing wrong. Let's not try to hide it. Let's not, let's not try to cover this up. We know when we are being disobedient in our way as a child of God. We know when we are committing a sin, 9.9 times out of 10. Yeah, there may be some times where we commit a sin and we may be unaware, but most of the time we know. And the reason why we know is because, again, we've read the word of God, right? Not only that, but the Holy Spirit abides within us. And because the Holy Spirit dwells within us, the role of the Holy Spirit, we must remember again from the 16th chapter of John's gospel, is that the Holy Spirit leads us unto all truth. So we know the Holy Spirit is guiding us and the Holy Spirit will let us know again when something isn't right, when we shouldn't do something. You would say, we would say that we have a feeling of when we're not supposed to do something. But hey, even though we have that feeling, some of us, we push right ahead, even though we know that we are doing wrong. David, he knew that he was doing wrong. David knew that he was fornicated. David knew that he was committing adultery. And then what we'll see here in our lesson today is that David, he tried to cover up his sin. Have you ever tried to cover up your sin? Don't try to fool me. None of us are perfect. All of us, we try to keep our sins hidden away in a closet. That's what David tried to do. Now we'll see there in the fifth verse, we're told that their fornication, the adultery that David and Bathsheba that they committed, It resulted in Bathsheba becoming pregnant with David's child. And we'll see there that Bathsheba, she did not try to hide her pregnancy from David. We'll see there that she sent word of her pregnancy to David. Now, as I have said before, you and I, we should understand that there are consequences to our actions. David, he had bad thoughts and then he acted on those bad thoughts. We should understand that there are consequences to our actions, good or bad. If, if again, you are obedient to God's instructions, then you are rewarded because of your faith. You are rewarded because of your obedience. But when you choose to be disobedient, again, like I said, we all know when we are transgressing against the Lord. When you choose to, to be disobedient, when you choose to indulge in sin, we should understand that there are consequences to our actions. Now, after being told there in the fifth verse about Bathsheba's pregnancy, David, he could have faced the music here, right? He could have admitted to his wrongdoing because again, he knew that he was doing wrong. He could have acknowledged that he was doing wrong. But we'll see here in our Sunday school lesson today that David, again, he did what what we sometimes do. Again, when we try to keep our sins hidden away, when we try to sweep them up under a rug, that's what David did. David, he went into cover up mode, as we'll see here in scripture that's outside of our lesson there in the sixth verse. I hope you have your Bible open to, to follow along with me here. We'll see there in the sixth verse that David, he sent for Uriah, who was out on the battlefield. Uriah, he was a soldier in the army of Israel, and he was on the battlefield with his brothers in arms. And and we'll see there in, in the eighth verse that when Uriah had arrived back home, we'll see that he was greeted by David. And, and we'll see that, that David, he had a plan. And, and what was David's plan? Well, we'll see there in the eighth verse that His plan was to send Uriah back home to to be with Bathsheba. He desired for Uriah to to lay with his wife to to try to hide the fact that he had committed adultery, to hide the fact that he had got a, a woman who was married, that he had got her pregnant. So let me send her husband back home and it'll look like Uriah got her pregnant rather than me. However, we'll see there when we take a look at the ninth verse that there was a problem with David's plan. And the problem with David's plan was that Uriah did not play alone. We'll see there in the ninth verse that Uriah, he didn't go home. 
We are told that Uriah, he slept at the door of the king's house with the servants of the king, with the servants of David. So, so Uriah didn't go along with the cover up. Uriah was again, totally unaware of what was going on. Uriah would have no idea why he was back home from, from the battlefield. So David, his initial plan here, it doesn't work, right? So does David, does he let it go? Does he let his plan go? No, he doesn't. We'll see here that David, he tried again to get Uriah to go back to, to being with his knife. We're told there in the 13th verse that David, he fed the man and he made the man drink. He made the man get drunk. So again, this was part of David's plan. He fed the man, he got him drunk for the intention of getting Uriah to go back home to be with his wife so that Uriah could lay down with his wife and make it appear that Uriah had got Bathsheba pregnant. So again, we'll see there in scripture that, that Uriah he didn't follow along with, with the plan. He, he yes, got drunk, but he didn't go back home. And, and the reason why Uriah would not go back home was because he felt bad about his brothers being out on the battlefield and, and him being back home and, and him going back to his wife and, and laying with, with his wife, you know, Uriah, it would seem he had a sense of honor, right? He, he much rather have been out there on the battlefield with his brothers rather than, than being back home. So again, for the second time now, David's plan to cover up his sin, it does not work. So does David let this go? We'll see here that David, the only thing that he continues to do here is compound his sin. He makes matters worse. We'll see there in the 14th verse, that David, he wrote a letter to Joab and he had Uriah bring this letter to Joab. Now, what was in this letter? We'll see there in the 15th verse that it was Uriah's death warrant. Joab was to put Uriah on the front lines of the hottest battle so that Uriah would die on the battlefield. So this was truly malicious, wasn't it? This was was truly wicked of David, a man after the Lord's heart, as scripture describes him. Does this sound like the actions that one who is a child of God should take? Shouldn't we be putting off such malicious actions, such wickedness as a, a child of God? But again, none of us are perfect. And again, some of us, we choose to indulge in sin and and we can move wickedly when, when we do so. Now we'll see there in the 16th verse that, that Joab did as David had ordered. And we'll see there in the 17th verse that, that Uriah, he was killed on the front lines. So one sin led to another sin and, and David, he just stacked his sins. He, he compounded his sins that we see there. And he was truly cruel in what it was that he did to cover up his sin. Now we'll see there as our lesson, it skips down to the 26th verse that when Uriah's death had reached Bathsheba, we are told that, that Bathsheba, she mourned, which again is very, very understandable because I imagine that, that Bathsheba, that, that she loved her husband. It was David that put her in the position that she was in in the first place. We'll see there in the 27th verse that David had her brought to his house where he took her to be his wife. Why was David doing this again? To cover up his wickedness, to cover up her pregnancy, to cover up his adultery. Hey, if she is David's wife, now it won't look so strange. It won't look so odd that she would be carrying around a baby and then giving birth to a child. David is doing all of this to cover up his sin. And again, everything that we have seen David do so far in our Sunday school lesson today has truly been wicked. It has truly been evil. And again, 
This is a man who scripture says is after the heart of the Lord. Do you think God moves with such evil intention? No. So why should we, as a child of God, if our heavenly father is love and, and moves out of love, why should we move out of such wickedness? No, we, we may not move like David did, but I tell you, some of us, we can move with some truly evil intent and then turn around and say that we are a child of God. You better watch yourself if you move that way. Do you think that God would be pleased with you moving in that way? Do you think the Lord was pleased with David moving in that way? Well, again, we'll see there in scripture that the Lord was not pleased with David and the way that David moved. Now, our lesson at this point, it skips over to the 12th chapter there, and it jumps all the way down to the 13th verse. But I want to tackle some of the opening verses there in the 12th chapter. You see, in the first verse there, we'll see where that Nathan had a word for David about a rich man who had a flock of lamb. And then there was this poor man who had only one, who he raised, who he fed and nourished, and it grew with him and his children. And so someone visited the rich man for, you know, the cattle, for some sheep, for some lamb. And instead of the rich man taking from his own bunch, guess what the rich man did? He went and he stole one, the lamb, the only one that the poor man had, stole it from him and then gave it to the one that came to him. And we'll see there in the fifth verse that, that after David heard this story from Nathan, David, he was fired up. David, he was angry. And he said that the rich man should pay with his life. Now there in the seventh verse, we'll see that, that Nathan told David that this story, it was representative of David and Uriah and what David had did to Uriah. So imagine the, the pit that may have formed in, in David's stomach when he realized that he couldn't hide his sin from the Lord. You may be able to hide your sin from, from flesh and blood, but you can't hide anything from God. And Nathan will see there that Nathan asked, what, what, why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? All of this was the Lord's rebuke for David. And so David, he could have tried to dress up his sin. David, he could have tried to, to make excuses. That's, that's what uh, some of us would do if we were we're caught in the wrong, right? We would try to say, no, 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 it's not like that, right? We would try to, to dress up our wrongdoing. We would try to justify the wrongs that we have done to, to make ourselves look good. But we'll see there in the 13th verse that David, when he was confronted with God's rebuke of his actions, David simply said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. There was no dressing up of his sin. There was no trying to make excuses. There was no trying to justify his actions. I mean, how could he? How could he justify all that he had did, the maliciousness that he moved with, the cruelty that he moved with, the wickedness that he moved with? How can we, when we know that we have done wrong, how can we justify our sins? We can't, but guess what? we try to anyway. So we'll see there that after David admitted his sin, Nathan said to David, the Lord has put away your sin. And he said to David, you shall not die. Why does he say there that you shall not die? Well, adultery, as we know from the story of Jesus when, when the, the religious leaders brought the woman who was caught in the, act, in the act of adultery, they brought her to Jesus for the intention of Jesus stoning her. David was supposed to be stoned for, for the actions that he took, the, the adultery, the fornication. He even again had a man killed. David was supposed to be, be put to death for his actions. But we'll see there in, the, in, in that scripture in the 13th verse that the Lord had already put away David's sin. He was already showing David mercy. 
Again, God shows all of us mercy today. We live under the mercy of God. What I mean by that is that all of us, we live with second chance. We live with another opportunity to improve, to correct our way, to turn away from sin and to live in repentance. Repentance, that's not forgiveness. Repentance is turning away from doing wrong to going in the way that is proper, that is correct. David now has that chance. He had committed a sin. He's given this second chance to now to improve, to correct the way in which he was going. We'll see there in the 14th verse that because of his sin, his sin would go punished. We're told there in the 14th verse that the child that Bathsheba gave birth to, that the child would die. And there in the 15th verse, we'll see that the baby did die. Again, people like to define David by him defeating Goliath and by his great sin. But I would define David as a man of faith. Was he perfect? No. Are you perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. Are we a child of God? I am. And I certainly hope that you are. What defines us as a child of God is the fact that, that we know the divine truth. And in that divine truth, we know that we are sinners that fall short of the glory of God, but God gave us his only begotten son as his rebuke. His only begotten son, Christ told us that we are sinners and that we need to turn away from our sin, live in repentance by following him. And when we do this, we will not perish, but we will have everlasting life. We have a rebuke today that we have received from the Lord in Christ. And what defines us is if we heed that rebuke, if we live in obedience by following in the way of Christ. So again, this week, the big takeaway from our lesson is that we aren't perfect, but again, when we sin, we should heed God's rebuke. We should turn away from our sin. We should turn away from indulging in sin. And we should, again, we should repent. We should acknowledge, we should admit our wrongdoing. And then, as we saw in our lesson last week, we need to live in correction. We need to earn God's forgiveness. Don't keep indulging in sin. Move in repentance. Will you do that today? I certainly hope that you will. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.